a girl scavengers for food. Her father tries to cook with rusty tins. A baby needs a doctor. And there's no hiding from the sun. On this island in the South China Seas, you can literally smell the scandal. The scandal of thousands of people being forced to live without shelter, sanitation or water. Tonight, we ask why. Rescuing and rounding up Vietnamese boat people has become a full-time job for the Royal Hong Kong Marine Police. On this trip, they took Vietnamese off four small boats, each dangerously overcrowded, leaking and fit for little more than a trip around the bay, let alone a perilous 10-day ocean crossing. Whether they're right or wrong to have made the trip, they know why they've come, for freedom and a better life. But they're now at the center of an international crisis. The question, what do you do with them? This is Dia Chow Island, a barren, inhospitable place with restricted food and water supplies some 20 miles from Hong Kong. Until today, its population was just two elderly fishermen. But by this evening, there'll be 4,102 boat people here, with facilities under canvas for just 800. The rest of them aren't going to be too pleased with the promised land they risked their lives for. They'll be spending the night on that beach over there by the wreckage of some of their own boats. As they see it, they're now cut off from their past. For Hong Kong, the short-term problem is keeping them alive. For Hong Kong and Britain, which has responsibility for the Crown Colony, the long-term problem is where to send the boat people. This was the issue addressed last week at an international conference of foreign ministers in Geneva. Vietnamese boat people who found a new and permanent life in the West were there to protest that nobody must be forcibly sent back, repatriated to Vietnam. The Americans supported this view, but Britain's foreign minister, Sir Geoffrey Howe, disagreed. Vietnam must accept that no country has the right to export its surplus population to other countries. There is no future for those people except back in their own country. A hard line, but no immediate answer to the growing problem we found on the South China Seas. Dawn last Thursday morning, the day the politicians met. These people had been at sea for 11 days. Some hardliners in Hong Kong have even suggested the boat people be machine gunned before they can land. Within minutes, the police were towing in the next group. This canal barge with the women and children already taken off had been found floating engineless, just drifting towards Hong Kong. The 220 on board have paid around 300 pounds each for the trip. As they get off, they're arrested. Faced with 500 arrivals a day, the Hong Kong government feels it has no choice but to get tough. Up to a year ago, all boat people were regarded as refugees, assured of a permanent place in the West. Ever since the fall of Saigon, this was all they wanted, a guarantee that if they survived the journey, and nobody knows how many boats have sunk, they would have escaped from Vietnam forever. But with the new arrivals regularly filling police landing craft, the rules have been changed. Now, for these people, the future is as uncertain as was their life expectancy on those tiny, tatty boats. The only certain thing is that they're going to Tai Chau Island, where they become a British responsibility. The new policy is that one day, but nobody knows when, these people will be vetted. Those who can prove they're in fear of political persecution at home will be allowed to stay. The rest will be sent home. When or how hasn't been sorted out because world governments can't agree. 
This is the first day of the filling up of the barren island. Each person is carrying everything they now own. The police have ammunition and tear gas grenades tucked away just in case there's trouble. The first priority is food. Once a day, each person will be given a tin of mackerel and a packet of custard cream biscuits. The local police take no chances. Health officers will be checking regularly for any sign of disease. Bubonic plague was diagnosed at another camp. Luckily, so far, it was a false alarm. Such is the life of refugees that each will soon be issued with a number by which he'll be known. In the meantime, a crude black armband is used to mark out the leaders. Tell them that they are all the leaders. They are responsible for feeding and water of all the people on this boat. But there's a problem with the food. It's far too fatty a diet for people used to simpler fare. And anyway, on an island without lavatories, the consumption of 4,000 tins of oily fish every day is bound to make sanitary conditions worse. In answer to criticism of living standards on Tai Chow Island, the Hong Kong government, caught in a chain it would rather not be part of, says it's doing its best. 15 crowded camps now hold 40,000 people. Those formerly accepted as refugees are waiting for a place in the West. In an old aircraft hangar, an example of how bad things can be, even for the lucky ones. Lucky only because they've been officially accepted as refugees. Families are forced to live in cubicles three feet high, stacked like bunk beds. Some of them have lived like this for years, each family in an open-sided room, only high enough to sit in. Imagine that. In your front room or your bedroom, call it what you will, you can't stand up. You can only stand in the corridor outside. These people live here, cook here, make love here, and the newborn children return here. The Hong Kong government readily admits there's a problem, says Legislative Council member Rita Fan. The situation of the uh, Vietnamese boat people in Hong Kong has reached crisis point. We have the largest influx we have experienced in years. Every day hundreds are coming in. And we, of course, take them and accommodate them. But we are running out of sight. Um, and yet there is no sign that this influx is going to decrease or going to stop. Um, we would hope that these boat people who are not refugees um, could be repatriated back to Vietnam. And now you're putting them in the most appalling conditions. Mm -hmm. No sanitation, no water, not enough food. Mm -hmm. I don't say about not enough food, actually. We are doing our best. Um, is the best no good water? enough? I mean, this is a pretty rich part of the world. Well, you cannot build camps overnight. And there'll soon be no funds for the boat people. The Legislative Council has voted to cut them off. And as Hong Kong knows nothing will deter them from leaving Vietnam, the authorities' attitude may seem rather callous. But the pressure on Hong Kong is relentless. This month looks like setting a new record for new arrivals. These people, like most of those we met, had spent their life savings on the economy class trip, and they'd made it. How long is it taking them to get here? How long is the trip? Uh, khi mà từ Việt Nam đến đây uh, phải gần bao nhiêu thời gian? 11 days. 11 days. Why did you leave? The reason why I left was to get out of Vietnam. Because the Vietnam is difficult. It's difficult to live in a communist uh, country. So, what makes him think things will be better here? And why does he think Hong Kong should look after him? Yes, I think uh, Hong Kong is better because 
belong to England. More freedom. The family of 16 on this fishing boat included their uncle, Sam Ajeng, a former captain in the defeated South Vietnamese army. I've been prison for uh, nine years, four months, plus one year. I was uh, in the custody of the local people's committee of the district. So your only crime, really, was being an officer in the defeated army, as it were? There's no room for you here. You're going to be put on an island over there. I would have accepted that. You've accepted that? Yes. Better than to return to Vietnam. Even if I have to die here. He's not a well man as it is, but he can't get off the boat. Still moored in a tight circle in the middle of the harbour, the last lot of boats. Police say there are too many people on the island already to let them off. And anyway, they say, it's probably cooler here with the sea winds, despite the fact that on some boats, it's virtually standing room only. There's no privacy, and not having a toilet at sea is somehow even more humiliating than not having one on land. Back on the island, water is what's most in demand. Okay, later, later. Tell him, just tell him, just tell this guy later. Right, we're doing it as quickly as we can. If he keeps out of the way, if this guy keeps... Shut up! If this guy keeps out of the way, we'll get it done all that much quicker. Shipping in fresh water and controlling its distribution is a major problem. The only boat leader will be over there already. Yeah, the boat's leader are over there, maybe over there, but they've got assistance, so he can piss off. There'll soon be enough drinking water, but water to wash with is out of the question. The 50 policemen on the island, none speaking Vietnamese, are outnumbered a hundred to one. Inspector James Turner from Glasgow is the man in charge. Or trying to be. Shut up! Shut up down there and listen! Only assistance. The women and the kids away from there. And Mr. Chong, absolute silence from no one. I don't want any back chat at all. Yeah, I already explained for them, but they don't listen. What can I do with that? Smack them over the head. Days after we arrived, a representative from Save the Children Fund visited the island. The conditions are much as you would expect on what is in effect a desert island. Uh, the people are existing on lifeboat kind of rations, that's biscuits and uh, tin milk, tin fish and so on. Uh, there are no toilet facilities and the fresh water supply is uh, poor. Uh, there's no, in fact no illness or disease at the moment and no signs of malnutrition. But clearly, if the people stay there for some time, uh, the conditions could deteriorate. Could you compare those conditions with others that you and your colleagues know of in other parts of the world? They're certainly much worse than any of the refugees or asylum seekers in Hong Kong at the moment. And they're clearly worse than, for example, the refugee camps that uh, one has seen in the Lebanon, where the Palestinians are. The irony is that Hong Kong is a very rich city despite being one of the most crowded places on Earth. It's that wealth which poses the question as to whether they're really doing as much as they could, or whether to some degree they want the problem to look bad to get international help. Here at Sek Kong, another incomplete attempt at a short-term solution. Behind a ring of barbed wire, this is the place where the next 7,000 or so Vietnamese boat people are due to be put. They call it Tent City, and it's on an old airfield in the middle of the new territories. But in the face of a chorus of protest from local residents, the authorities so far have been unable to use it. Twenty miles across the water from Hong Kong, and hidden from public view, most of the boat people have had a nasty shock. This was not what freedom was supposed to be. 
Superintendent David O'Brien is a worried man. At the moment, as you can see, uh, we've lost control of part of the island uh, because two and a half thousand were left here or returned here yesterday, and we just don't have the facilities or the manpower to cope with it. Consequently, we're doing it as best we can, but we're only just coping, that's for sure, until we can get shut of some of them. But how long can he keep the situation under control on the whole island? It depends really on the number of arrivals which may come in the next month and a half as to how bad the situation gets here and what sort of control we do have. Obviously, we'll do our best to try and keep control um, of the people and of issuing rations and that sort of thing and making sure there's no punch-ups, fights or anything else. Another hour, another boat. Word has got through to Vietnam about the new Get Tough policy. And when questioned, the boat people will talk about the fear of persecution if they're sent home. All of them now want to convince the authorities that they are genuine political refugees. Few will succeed. I left Vietnam because I couldn't live with the communists. You didn't like the regime? Yes. What was wrong with it? What was wrong with life there? Yeah, the living condition is very, very terrible. Yeah, people have no job to do. Uh, even um, people who are working uh, with the government uh, get no wage. What did you do? Yeah. yeah. You were a teacher? Yes, I'm a teacher of English in a high school. How much did you pay the man with the boat to bring you here? Uh, I, uh, I had to pay um, about uh, over 800 USD dollars to uh, get here. At her 25th attempt, Li Chai Chow finally escaped from Da Nang in what was then South Vietnam. Hers was a long and hazardous journey. But now, nine-tenths of the boat people come from the north, hopping along the Chinese coast. For them, maybe only a day or two on the open sea, on the last leg of their journey to Tai Chau Island. On this day, they'd run out of food. 145 people didn't even get their tin of mackerel and packet of custard cream biscuits. Once again, the situation came close to getting out of control, though the police were prepared. At last week's Geneva conference, some countries, like Britain, agreed to accept a limited number of boat people, though few of those actually want to come to Britain, and some promised money to help build more camps. This outcome, according to Hong Kong's coordinator for refugees, Michael Hansen, is a disgrace. It is. We've been left to, to deal with a very difficult situation that arriving in large numbers and there's no real prospect of them being resettled. And of course when they arrive this comes as a terrible blow to them. Yes, this is not paradise found, is it? No, it, no, it certainly isn't. And nor are the camps, of course. And they find themselves in camps for quite a few years facing the prospect of repatriation. Mm. The simple truth is that the, the West doesn't want them. It, it's not so much compassion fatigue, but the compassion is being directed elsewhere. Mm. For example, the United States wants to resettle Russian Jews rather than Vietnamese people. Yes. That's the reality. What should the United Nations be doing? The United Nations should be helping us build these camps and man these camps. We have a serious manpower shortage and we're short of funds to build camps. They should help to do that. They should help us feed these people and provide medical care to them. They can do all of it. They do some of it at the moment, but they don't do enough. And in the case of the International Conference and the search for a solution, they could have done far more. The conference was the result not of a United Nations initiative, but of a Hong Kong government and an ASEAN initiative. The United Nations were reluctant at first and they've had to be dragged to this. We need a new solution and they have to help provide it. All around him in already overcrowded Hong Kong, Michael Hansen is responsible for even more overcrowded camps for boat people. Though to be fair, none so far is as bad as Tai Chau Island. This is Sham Shui Po Detention Center where more of those without official refugee status are being held. Once again, the living space for each group is barely three feet high. But they do have adequate food, water and sanitation. 
In the harbour, disused ferries have long since been filled to overflowing. Britain, Australia and Hong Kong say these people must be sent home. America and the Soviet Union say repatriation is inhumane. Vietnam will take them back if a $1,000 bounty accompanies every one. It's all over the heads of the boat people, sheltering and sweltering under improvised blanket tents. Rita Fan, who agrees with the principle of repatriation, finds Vietnam's proposition offensive. If it is seen as a way of making more uh, foreign exchange available to Vietnam, then who is there to say that the Vietnamese government may not resort to using their own people uh, as a means of getting the valuable foreign exchange that they needed? So we have to be very careful as well. A dangerous and an outrageous precedent if Vietnam demands a thousand dollars each to take back their own people. For the best part of a week we've been watching as the boat people have flooded into this island. It's immensely hot and sticky and the conditions have deteriorated as the population has risen. It's now something over 5,000 and they've had a very hard trip across. Visiting doctors have patched up the obvious wounds but the much needed aid staff from Save the Children and Christian Aid have not yet arrived. Food is short, there isn't enough water, certainly not for washing, and there are no lavatory facilities. The ruined building behind me has become a stinking latrine, and there's a growing fear of disease. A child scavenges for food on the shoreline. Shellfish, which her father tries to cook in a rickety stove made from a pile of empty baked bean tins. This weekend, baked beans were introduced to make a change from tinned mackerel, but there are still no can openers. Mothers and daughters do their best to keep clean in the absence of washing facilities. Many appear to be losing hope sinking into apathy. This was to be a temporary camp, but the lack of space elsewhere and the rising tide of boat people look set to make it permanent. The future isn't even worth discussing. The only thing worth arguing about is food. Here, the police rush to quell a fight over half a tin of beans. It hardly seems possible that conditions here behind the beach are even worse than they are in the camp proper under canvas. Here there's no proper shelter, there's no bedding, and when it rains the brown earth turns to mud. So at the moment the new arrivals, and there were 343 of them last night alone, are left moored out on their boats, unless of course they fall ill or their boat sinks, as the one behind me did just the other day. If the Hong Kong government had wanted to exert pressure on the international community, by allowing us to see some really appalling conditions, they could hardly have done better. But if they wanted to make life a little more tolerable for the Vietnamese boat people, or indeed those in their charge, they could hardly have done worse. For a few brief hours last week, politicians in Geneva focused on this appalling problem. Chances are now they've gone home, the problem will be forgotten again. The old South Vietnamese soldier Sam Ai Jen has now been accepted as a refugee and allowed ashore. He's too ill and too weak to stand. He gave us three letters to post, in case for him this really is journey's end. Just because for the boat people anything is better than Vietnam doesn't mean they don't deserve better than they've got. The whole situation really does stink.